Welcome back, my name is Kerry, and today I'm going to give you the inside scoop on something we've all been waiting for, the peak of off-site constructed home prices. Starting all the way back in 2020, I did a series of videos following the price increases I was getting in real time from the factory I deal with in hopes of helping people understand what was happening in the market. If you were around the channel back then, first of all, thank you, and second of all, you probably remember those videos were coming out more frequently than people wanted. During 2020 and 2021, the price increase bulletins I was getting were absolutely relentless as we worked through what I was referring to as the perfect storm for new home construction. There was a time in 2021 where the price of everything was spiraling out of control and I was seeing multiple price increases per week and to be honest with you it wasn't fun for me, it definitely wasn't fun for the buyers and I don't think it was all that much fun for the factories. However I knew eventually something had to give and I would be able to announce the first price decrease and today is that day. What I'm gonna do is tell you how we got here, let you know what changed to cause a price decrease and speculate where we go from here. So let's do it. I've been selling factory built homes since 2009 and typically the norm was to get one price increase per year and we'd usually be fussy about it. If we saw two in a single year, let me tell you, we'd really be pissed. Compare that to 2021, where sellers would have been jumping for joy if they only had two price increases over the entire year. It's a completely different animal. Let's take a look back in the archives and see just how far we've come. After crap hit the fan in March 2020, there was a period of uncertainty and a bit of panic where the stock market dipped and nobody really knew for sure how things were gonna shake out. I shouldn't say nobody knew, maybe some people did, but I certainly didn't. After things settled down and the real estate market started heating up, we saw the first price increase of the year on July 17th, and it ranged from 2.5 to 10% depending on the home series. The reason given for the increase was rapid rising costs in almost every supply avenue. The notice went on to say, we realize we are in a very sensitive market and the competition is fierce, but due to the volatility of the commodity items we depend on to build our houses, we will continue to evaluate where prices are going, which may result in a material surcharge. That is what we call foreshadowing folks and a material surcharge we got. Just 11 days later on July 28th, a material surcharge was announced in a notice that read, lumber and wood sheathing materials are currently experiencing unprecedented price increases to the point that given our order backlog, we must implement a material surcharge. The surcharge will be on the overall square footage of the home, including any porch or stretch options. At that point in time, I had no idea how many more price increases would follow, and I'm not going to bore you with each and every one of them, but I will say that we had one more price increase and one more material surcharge increase before the end of 2020. And that was nothing in comparison to 2021. Looking back at 2021, it's now clear that that was the epicenter of the full crap storm. And over those 12 months, we saw 12 price increases. So instead of one per year, we were getting one per month. This was around the time lumber was going nuts, there was a labor shortage, there were the infamous supply chain bottlenecks, and to top it off, it seemed like everyone was trying to buy a new home. It all led to delays longer than normal backlogs, and dare I say, a lot of frustration from every part of the process, from factories all the way down to the end buyer. 2021 was definitely peak crap show, and in comparison, the first half of 2022 hasn't been nearly exciting. Which I'm very happy about. Before this latest notice was sent out, we received three price increases earlier this year, the last one being sent out on March 15th, right around the time of the second big peak in lumber prices. I know a lot of people think companies are greedy and the price increases were just lining their pockets with silver dollars and caviar, and maybe there was a bit of that going on, but the cost to build was also going through the roof and they have to sell their products for more than their cost or eventually they'll cease to exist. And that's not a good thing. That concludes the price increase history lesson of 2020 to 2022, an era that will go down in the books as the big crap show. Here's what's going on now. Over the last month, I've had several people ask me if I'd seen any indication that prices were going to decrease. And up until last week, I'd been telling them no. Now, lumber prices have come back down to earth, interest rates are up, people are talking about a recession, and everyone who has been sitting on the sidelines waiting to make a move are wondering if it'll be enough to slow down this runaway train. Here's what I can tell you with 100% certainty. I can't predict where prices are going or when they'll be there, but I can give you the latest information as I get it, and that's better than nothing. For the first time in a long time, we will at least temporarily be paying less for a home out of the factory I deal with than we were the week before last. That's right, prices 
have gone down. If you've been following along, you may know that I purchased a home that came out of the factory at the start of June before this was announced, which is both a kick in the pants and possible confirmation that I bought at the exact top of the cycle, which then proves the point I was trying to make 15 to 20 seconds ago. I can't predict where prices are going or when they'll be there. Wonderful. The bulletin says we are constantly watching any macroeconomic trends that affect material pricing. Currently, commodity-based material inputs are high and going higher almost without exception. This includes any oil-based products such as carpets, linoleum, vinyl siding, shingles, windows, etc. Copper-based products like wire as well as drywall slash VOG are also continuously rising. We anticipate commodity-based product pricing is not expected to come down and will likely continue to rise in the future. Yada 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 let's get to the juicy bit the one material category that seems to have flattened off is steel we are not certain if this is a longer term trend or a short term market dislocation to that end the steel surcharge will be reduced by ten dollars per house foot on single section homes and twenty dollars per house foot on sectional homes on all invoices effective monday june 20th 2022 now we're talking two things that excite me about this bulletin number one i now officially pay less for a home which means the end user will pay less for a home the home i bought at the start of june is 66 feet long which means if i bought it now it would be 660 dollars less than i actually paid better yet if it was a multi-section home the decrease would have been even bigger if i had purchased a 27 by 56 foot home i would be paying 1120 dollars less not bad. This might not seem like a big deal compared to the price increases we've had over the last two years, but it's the first decrease I've seen since this all started and could be an indication that more are on the way. The second thing that excites me about this bulletin is it proves to me that if costs come down at the factory level, those savings may be passed on to me and finally the end user instead of just being absorbed into profit. This is what a lot of people have been waiting for. As previously stated, if you're looking for someone who can predict exactly where prices are going, I'm not your guy. However, it does seem like things might finally be starting to settle down and I am willing to speculate. A reduction on the steel surcharge makes me think that demand is slowing down and this could be the beginning of more reductions. I don't think we're out of the woods yet and as the bulletin mentioned, some building material costs are still increasing, which is canceling out the cost decreases in other areas like lumber, but I do think this is a step in the right direction for people waiting for factory built home prices to come down. On the sales side of things, I've also noticed a couple changes, mainly the speed at which homes are selling or not selling. Every home we listed between June of 2020 through the end of 2021, we had accepted offers within two weeks of being listed, with the fastest having an accepted offer four hours after it was listed. It was crazy. We have a home for sale right now that's been listed for 30 days with no offers. 30 days really isn't that long for a home to be listed, and if I look back at the historical data, we're probably still under the average days to sell, but it's definitely not the white hot crazy market that we've been used to. If you're one of the people who's ready to buy but has been waiting for things to cool off a little bit, it looks as though your time might finally be here. I'm not saying the same will be true for every factory and market, but on the way up, the increases did seem to be fairly consistent industry-wide. The difference now is offsite constructed homes tend to serve a fairly small regional area because of shipping costs, so the demand in each individual area will likely dictate if those factories feel the need to decrease prices in any way, shape, or form. It's a very interesting time for the entire housing market, and I'm considering all opinions on where we go from here, but I still don't know for sure what's coming. What I can do is share the real information I'm getting from factories and what I'm seeing in my area to help you navigate what seems to be a transition into a more balanced market. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this to happen with prices, so I'll be following along as things progress and will post any relevant updates right here on my YouTube channel. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.